All right, welcome back to the next video in this series. We are creating a loot system that the enemy drops loot and then the loot is magnetized to the player. In the first video, we got everything set up and all our objects made. So let's go ahead and get started on creating our loot drop from the enemy. So let's go over to the event sheet. First, I'm going to tidy this up a little. So in this blank space, let's right click and add a group. And I'm going to call this a uh, player. I'm going to highlight and then shift and select to highlight that whole block there. And then move all of this into the player group. And then I can just close it up. So it gives us a little bit more room to work with here. What happens when the enemy has received enough hits? So let's add an event and go grab our enemy and scroll down to instance variables, compare instance variable, hits is equal to, I'm gonna make mine three, keep it nice and simple. So now once our enemy has been hit three times, then we can start creating our loot. If we select this whole block and press B on the keyboard, it gives us a blank sub event. And the sub event is indented and will only take place as long as this is true first. So in the sub event, I want to create the loot, but I want to create it. I want to create several pieces. I'm going to do five and I want it to shoot out from the enemy in all directions. We could just say uh, system create and do that five times, or we can make it a lot easier and create a loop. So let's double click on this sub event, go into system, and I'm going to type in four and I want the four loop just the normal for loop here. So in some loops, you don't really need to name them, but in our loop, we're going to need to reference the name in the code. So we need to give it a name in between those quotation marks. I'm just gonna put a capital L for loot. You can actually give yours a name or put whatever you want in there, but we're going to need to reference that letter L here in just a minute. And then the start index, I'm gonna start at one and I'm gonna end at five because I want five pieces created. Let's hit done. So this block of code is going to happen five times. We can add an action, go into system and create object. Go to next, let's click to choose the loot object. We want this on our layer zero with our player and the X and the Y are going to be that enemy's X and Y. So right in the middle of the enemy. So X is going to be enemy.x and Y will be enemy.y. Okay, and if we play this, our, uh, our fireball is going through the enemy. We forgot to do something, or I forgot to do something. Let's go back in our player group and on our fire on collision with enemy, we want to add one to hits and then let's add another action. Go into the fire and type in destroy. We want to make sure that the fireball gets destroyed as well. Okay. And then I'm going to close that back up. And then in here, highlight this loop block and press B on the keyboard. That gives us another sub event. And let's add an action to that. Go into our enemy and type in destroy. So now once that enemy's variable reaches three, It'll run this loop five times and then it'll destroy the enemy. Okay, I'm going to debug this layout this time and I'll open up the loot. There's nothing there because we haven't created it yet. And then I will fire three shots on our enemy. And there it is, our enemy disappeared. And there is, uh, it looks like one, one loot there, but you can see that it created one, two, three, four, five. They're just all on top of each other. Our loop works. Next, I'm going to want to shoot these pieces of loot out in different directions. And that's where our loop name, the L, comes into play. So let's set the direction for each object created in this loop. So let's add an action, go into our loot object, and set angle. So to get the angle to be different for each one, each time the loop passes through, I'm going to reference this L and add, uh, let's say, 70 degrees to it. So to access that, we type in loop index and in parentheses, we want to put in that L, but it also has to be in between quotation marks. So what you have is loop index, parentheses, quotation marks, capital L, and then in the quotations and parentheses. And then I'm going to multiply that 
by 70. So what this is going to do, if we hit done, it's going to start at 1, because we say L from 1 to 5. It's going to create one loot object, and it's going to say loop index, which is 1 on the first pass. It's 1 times 70. So it's going to set the angle to 70 degrees. Then the second one is going to come through. It's going to be 2, and then it's going to multiply 70 times 2. Then 70 times 3, 70 times 4, and it's going to create an angle shooting outwards from the center of the enemy. Now that's not going to do anything, so we can't really test that just yet. But once our loot object is created, where do we put it over here? Once it is created on the screen, I want to know when the loot object is ready to be magnetized and when it is magnetized. So when it's created, the enemy drops it. I want the loot to shoot out, and while it's shooting out, it's not ready yet. And when it comes to a stop, then it will be ready. And then whenever the player gets within a certain distance, it'll be magnetized. So I'm going to set those variables up inside our loot object. So with it selected, over in the properties, let's add an instance variable, add a new one, and I'm going to call this first one uh, ready. And I'm going to make it a Boolean, meaning true or false, yes or no. Hit OK. And then let's add another one, and I'll call this one uh, magnetized. And then it will also be a Boolean. OK, all right, we can exit out of that. And back over in our event sheet, we can set this up. So let's add an event and go into our loot object and scroll down to our instance variables. Is Boolean instance variable set? And for magnetized, we'll hit done. And this says, is it magnetized? Uh, this is true. And then we could just create another block like this and invert this to say false. Or we could highlight this whole block, press X, and it gives us an else statement. So the code inside this block is if magnetized is true. Otherwise, we'll run this code. So in our else, if we're not magnetized, that means the player is not close enough and the loot is not trying to magnetize to our player. I'm going to highlight this whole block of uh, the else block and press B to create a sub event. And let's go into this sub event, into system, and I'm going to type in every tick. That's every frame of the game, 60 frames per second. I want to move that loot at a certain angle. So let's add an action, go into our loot object, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and pick move at angle. And the angle is going to be whichever angle the loot is facing because we change it in this loop up here. Each piece created, all five of them, have been set to a different angle. So the angle is going to be that object, loot.angle. And then the distance, uh, I'm just going to say 5 pixels. By default, our booleans are set to false. This else statement is the false of, of this boolean. If we play, and we hit it three times, they shoot off and they go 5 pixels per second, and they just keep going. This works. One of the ways we can get this to not keep moving at 5 pixels the whole time, we can stop it after a certain amount of time. So let's add an event and go into our loot object and I'm going to type in on created and then this ready variable that we created is going to be used to tell the game when the loot is stopped and ready to be collected. So on created I'm actually going to move this up above our magnetized block and then add an action to it and let's go to system and type in wait and I'm going to wait 0.3 seconds. And then we can turn that ready variable on after that. So go into loot and scroll down to set boolean. And we're going to set ready to true. If we tell this to move at 5 pixels while it's not true, then when we set it to true up here, it'll stop moving that 5 pixels. So in this every tick block, Let's just double click on it to add another condition and go into our loot and scroll down to instance variables is boolean instance variable set and we want the ready and with this condition highlighted like that press i on the keyboard it inverts it and it puts that little x there so this says that this 
variable is false. So as long as we are not magnetized and we are not ready, we'll move five pixels. But once it's created, after 0.3 seconds, we're going to set this to true and this will not, uh, this condition will not be met anymore. So let's try that out. So I hit it three times and it shoots out. After 0.3 seconds, it stops. So very cool. That is our enemy dropping loot. There's one more thing I want to do before we end this video. And before we do that one thing, I want to tidy this part up as well. So let's right click in this blank space and add a group. And I am going to call this uh, loot. We're going to have several parts to this loot. So I'm going to actually right click and add another group. And I'll call this one created. And I will slide this group up into this group so it's a subgroup of that group. Okay, so for the created, I'm going to move all of this code that we just made into there. So highlight all of this and click and drag it into the created group. And then if we close it up, we have more room to work with. I am actually going to create yet another group. So right click, add group, and I'll just call this score. This is just kind of a added extra bonus and it helps us kind of see what's going on without having to debug every time. Okay, I am going to go back to the layout. Let's go ahead and save while we're thinking about it. And this is where the difference between the free version and the paid version comes in. If you're in the free version, you should only have the one layer right now. Your background tile will be in your layer zero and then you will create this new layer. Otherwise, we moved our background tile to its own layer and locked it. Now, in our layers panel, we can right click and add layer to the top, and I'm gonna call this HUD. And with that HUD layer selected, let's come over to the properties and change the parallax to zero comma zero. And what that does is it keeps our viewport in one place and does not move. It's an overlay to the rest of the game. Okay, with our HUD layer selected, let's double click and scroll down to text and insert a text object. And I'm going to uh, resize this a little, uh, something like that. Mine is 256 by 96, and I'm gonna slide it up uh, to position 6464, and then scroll down in the properties. You can kind of see text, it's written really, really small right there in black. So let's change the color first so we can see it. There it is, it's white. Let's change the size to 40. Uh, everything else I think I'm going to leave the same. I'm not gonna get too detailed on this. And what I want to do with this is create a way to show how many pieces of loot the player has collected. So let's go back over to our event sheet. And actually, let's click on our player object and then come over and let's edit instance variables and add instance variables. And I'm just gonna call this uh, loot and it'll be a number. And underscore our score group here, I'm going to add an event to score, grab our loot object and scroll down to on collision with another object. Let's click and choose the player. And I want to go into player and add to the instance variable add to loot one. And then we can also add another action, go into our loot object and uh, type in destroy, and that will get rid of the loot object off the screen. So if we play that, we shoot, now we can collect the loot, okay? And you see our text object stays in one place because we set the parallax to zero, zero. So to get that text to read how much loot we've collected, we will set that up in this action right here. And let's go into our text object and I'm gonna type in set text. And in between quotation marks, I'm going to type what I want it to say. And I'm gonna type loot in all caps, semicolon and a space. And then on the other side of the quotation mark, an ampersand and then the instance variable inside our player object. So let's get our player first and then player dot and uh, the loot instance variable. So it should look like this, in between quotation marks, loot, semicolon, space, ampersand, player.loot. And if we shoot it, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. 
And actually, I'm going to check one more thing. So when we start, it actually says text because nothing has happened yet. That part of the code has not taken place yet. When we collect, then it changes. So we want it to say this uh, at the very beginning. So what I'm going to do is highlight this action, control C to copy, and then come up here to on start of layout event and highlight it and control V to paste. And that should give us loot equals zero. And then there you go. Okay. That is going to wrap it up for this video. We have one more. We will uh, magnetize our loot to our player in the next video. So that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you are saving and I will see you in the next one.